Hello, good afternoon. It's Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of European markets mid midday uh, mid afternoon update on the uh, EU indices and the uh, the actual uh, monster rally that we witnessed overnight and this morning and last night as well to a large extent on Wednesday, the thirteenth of April, two thousand and sixteen. Before I start, please be sure to visit TradeSignaler.com. You can certainly uh, catch all my analysis on there, which is a new app via cfds.com you can download on the google play and the app store and certainly uh, obviously gain access to my analysis in real time and other individuals analysis as well okay let's start in terms of uh, chronology a asian markets up quite substantially uh, in terms of economic data let's try to sum this up we had chinese data obviously um stronger than expected overnight that obviously triggered off the uh, potential move having said that though my interpretation and my understanding as uh, thus far is that the uh, Chinese trade balance, yes, it was slightly lower than expected, but the biggest concern is um, the Chinese imports. Uh, you had the exports obviously coming in a whopping 11.5% versus the expectations of 25 which obviously is impressive. And that's obviously sent the, uh, well, initially the Aussie and the, um, the Kiwi certainly short squeeze prior to that. Okay. You had imports actually worse than expected. Well, not worse, but basically coming worse, what did come in bad at minus 7.6%. So certainly to a large extent there, you had the uh, Chinese data really triggering off. And I think a lot of that was done in advance, because if I bring up the US markets, you can see that uh, uh, we, we started short squeezing well in advance. So it certainly is suspicious, given the fact that uh, the economic data certainly came in better than expected. Somebody obviously knew what was exactly, exactly what was happening. If I bring up the NASDAQ and you'll see with regards to the NASDAQ, you can see in the daily chart, we've broken out this rising contracting wedge pattern on the 60 minute chart. You can see that we'd flushed, we flushed, flushed as low as 4436 before we rallied a whopping 60, 70 points higher. And now we're another 40 points higher and we're testing that 4515 uh, zone at the most, sorry, 4530 zone. So we're back at the highs. So certainly is suspicious, certainly circumspect from my perspective. And it doesn't make sense in terms of the uh, the actual well the from the U.S. markets perspective anyway. Okay, especially given the fact that the U.S. DJPY uh, dipped uh, as low as 108. Uh, yes, you could argue that um, the hawkish rhetoric from Fed members yesterday caused the euro to collapse and caused the U.S. DJPY trade to uh, reignite, and that obviously triggered the rally. Add in the Chinese data, and obviously you have one hell of a cocktail. Uh, I one hell of a short squeeze, and that's exactly what we've witnessed this morning. Okay, adding the fact that obviously banking stocks coming in stronger than expected, so certainly somebody's front running here. Okay, somebody's definitely front running. Yesterday, somebody caught or had a whiff of the Chinese numbers. They obviously short. They obviously uh, started to buy in then or cover their short positions, and that's exactly what ensued. We had this perfect H and S formation. We were below the neckline daily chart. Obviously, it broken below. And abracadabra, the invisible hand comes in again, and we short squeeze higher quite substantially. Mm, okay, suspicious. I don't know. Call it what you want. Okay, uh, from my perspective, certainly smells fishy, and somebody definitely had inside information. Impossible not to. Uh, okay, from my perspective. So in terms of the S and P 500, if we're looking at a 60-minute chart, you can see that we fill the gap here, and then obviously the market reverse. We had this bearish engulfing candle. We had a lower high, and this market certainly obliterated that as well. So. Certainly, uh, from a technical perspective, there was no argument really or no explanation for an individual to buy into here, expecting a push higher, given the fact that we were in lower lows and lower highs. The only reason why you buy here with such conviction and push the market higher is if obviously you had inside information. That's why the film Billions is very, very interesting, or should we say a documentary or a drama that's currently popular at the moment, Billions. Certainly watch it and you'll see that uh, this whole game is rigged. Uh, it's so rigged, it's unbelievable, okay? Nobody is equal opportunities, level playing field, bullshit. Okay, it's all insider trading. They all have access to information. That's how they make their money. If it was a level playing field, trust me, they would not be making that money. Okay, so all these gurus or these individuals that claim 10, 20, 30 percent of their back on their returns and billionaires like Warren Buffett, etc., it's absolutely bullshit. Okay, they all have in they are all engaged in insider trading. That's the only way they make money. Okay, give them a trading account, let's see how they trade issue everything publicly, do a live analysis service, the way in which I do, your stop loss entry, targets, they would never perform, never, okay, uh, just bullshit, that's what I call it, absolute bullshit, okay, anyway, enough with the rant, okay, so uh, back to the live analysis service today, 
stopped out on four trades or five trades now, I think, consecutively. Uh, I, was, I was actually up 200 points yesterday. I think I'm actually negative for the week now. I think I've lost almost 160, 180 points in the last 24 hours alone. So certainly stopped out on my short trades. That doesn't matter. I've just closed the position on the, on the Kiwi now for plus 21. Okay, so uh, certainly stopped the rust of uh, negative trades. Either way, uh, I certainly wasn't expecting this rally. Okay, so let's go back to the uh, the actual review of European indices. So just giving you an explanation of what's happening here. Okay, so uh, inflation data came in slightly stronger as well out of Europe, out of France. Certainly came in stronger. Spanish inflation stronger as well. We had weak uh, German growth, uh, a downgrade, and industrial production certainly came in weaker as well. And that certainly is uh, obviously souring sentiment. You're looking for a potential move lower. Oil prices obviously was another catalyst for the rally yesterday. If I bring up the chart of crude oil, you can see here we are obviously holding resistance on the four hour chart and the daily chart. As we all know, we're into that double top resistance. OK, given the fact that the Saudis have, have stated that they're not going to be quitting production. It's just all about the oil production freeze. It certainly is, seems to be overdone from my perspective. And it's certainly looking for an excuse to take profits or a pullback is certainly warranted. OK, understand. OK, so uh, let's start with the euro stocks now, given the fact that we have US retail sales coming out shortly. Euro stocks at the moment, the daily chart certainly has pushed higher. We are obviously cl we've closed that gap now at three zero zero five. That should have acted as a resistance. The H&S obviously as well certainly hasn't. So I'm going to delete that trend line for now. Uh, taking the pivot high, just basically connecting it across. You do have resistance in this zone at gap fill. So I am looking for a potential retracement. That's my interpretation. OK, you have a you have the unfilled gap at 2940 left behind as well. So looking to potentially close that gap at two. OK, in terms of the euro stocks. 60 minute start, the euro, 60 minute chart, sorry, of the euro stocks. So here we go. What we're doing now is trying to connect the dots together. Certainly the market has pushed higher very, very impressively. As you can see, that diagonal trend line was supposed to come into play. The 200 MA was supposed to come into play and hold this market down along with the gap fill resistance. That certainly has been negated. OK, so you do, you've do you left an unfilled gap below. OK, this certainly is this move itself certainly looks exhausted from my perspective. And you are looking for a potential reversal. Now, looking at this inverted head and shoulders formation, folks, let's just calculate the actual target. And then we should know whether or not this uh, rally itself has uh, exhausted itself. So that's your left shoulder. Your head is here. You're looking for the right shoulder. Let's have a look here. IHS, here we go. So you're looking at the neckline at 2920 minus, you're looking at 2860, which basically equals 60 points. So you're looking at 2920 as potential target on the upside. And if I'm correct, sorry, it's uh, 2920. Uh, 2860 so uh, 2980 sorry so it's a 60 point I am right here aren't I yes not 80 points so 2920 so yes 3000 sorry okay sorry about my mathematical skills there okay so 3000 so basically we're into uh, uh, basically over bought territory okay especially given about the RSI as you can see they're peaking above the uh, the key zone okay so above the 70 zone you have an unfilled gap at 3040 but from my perspective, it certainly seems very unlikely. Again, this zone was very important. I actually went short at this zone and uh, the market certainly pushed higher. So at, at this current juncture, you are looking at uh, no man's land. Having said that, there is a zone here that's quite important. So you have uh, this uh, 3020 zone as potential resistance. Again, I am actually short the CAC at the moment. I'm short the NASDAQ. I'm short the S&P as well. So certainly heavily short this market at present. OK, so that's a zone to uh, certainly watch out for. OK, and the IHS formation has completed and therefore you are looking for a short squeeze. OK, right. So Eurostock certainly into resistance. Looking at the German DAX now, let's just bring up the daily chart of the German DAX. And you'll see straight away that we're into gap fill resistance. OK, so certainly looking for a retracement there. 60 minute chart certainly seems to be overdone. The gap fill certainly has closed. There is another unfilled gap at 10,040. Again, very unlikely given the fact that we've had uh, weaker German growth. Um, a potential downgrade. Let's just go back and uh, have a look here. OPEC cuts 2016 world oil demand. So again, that's bearish. Industrial production, bearish. Uh, let's have a look here. German Economic Institute lowers growth forecast to about 1.6% from 1.8% this year. So again, that's bearish. So 
there certainly is a, a, a lot of bearish news out there, okay, and therefore you are looking for a, a potential thrust lower, okay. So very, very important from my perspective. So you're looking for the DAX to fall, okay. Looking at the FTSE 100 now because this has been very stellar today. As you can see, we're breaking out, or attempting to break out. Uh, we uh, one time I was expecting that rising contracting wage pattern to come into play. That obviously hasn't, and the FTSE itself has uh, enjoyed a stellar move higher. This resistance at uh, 6316, I mean, it certainly is key and very, very important. And I was expecting that to hold, and that obviously hasn't been the case. So, in terms of the next move on the FTSE, the only logical move would be for the FTSE to, to hit the 6430 zone. But given the fact that oil is into resistance, the weak economic data, etc., it's going to be very hard. I mean, what was very perplexing is that the IMF downgraded global growth, and yet the equity market made new eyes. So, Certainly seems to be on the uh, QE train at the moment. 60 minute chart, again, it's in no man's land at the moment, looking for a potential retrace and a test back to that 6240 uh, breakout zone on the uh, FTSE 100. 10 minute chart at the moment, so let's have a look. Retesting the, the potential highs. The high has been 6340, so looking for a potential uh, a pullback here now and uh, looking for a retracement and, and a fall potentially lower. So that certainly is a zone that you're looking at. And then you have the unfilled gap left behind as well at 6240. So again, that certainly needs to be revisited from my perspective. Okay, right. Having said that, the FTSE 100 it still remains bearish given the fact that the Aussie, if I bring up the chart of the Aussie, uh, if I bring up the daily chart of the Aussie, you can see that we're certainly holding that uh, double top, triple top. Uh, resistance okay on the FTSE 100 on the Aussie sorry and therefore that certainly is indicated uh, as weakness for the FTSE 100 itself as well okay also bringing up the chart of the Kiwi if I bring up the chart of the Kiwi you'll see that uh, the daily chart of the Kiwi at the moment is double top and therefore that's, that doesn't bode well for the FTSE 100 okay so very very important to grasp that concept looking at the FTSE 250 now going to the daily chart you'll see that we're slap bang into resistance so again that does not bode well for bode well for the FTSE 100, okay? Right, uh, again, Euro stock 600, let's just look at the stock 600, going to the daily chart of the stock 600, and you are coming into resistance and therefore looking for weakness, okay? So from my perspective, the summation really is that uh, this market certainly is into uh, a resistance. Let's bring up the Euro USD as well. Where art thou, Euro USD? Where art thou? Here we go. Certainly has been one hell of a flush on the Euro USD uh, on the daily chart. Certainly has held that resistance zone, uh, given the fact that you had uh, hawkish commentary yesterday. That certainly has helped to a large part as well. Next level of support is uh, seen in this zone here. Okay, so very very important. Okay, so that's the zone that you're looking for in terms of support on the on the Euro. Now I was expecting previous resistance uh, to equal support here. So this zone at 1.1330 was expected to hold, and it should be interesting to see exactly how that uh, market reacts, okay? So again, all eyes on that. German growth downgraded, industrial production weak, inflation numbers certainly, uh, well, inflation numbers stronger than expected, so it's going to be a battle between stronger data or weaker data and obviously stronger, slightly stronger inflation numbers. So again, we shall see, and also risk aversion as well. We all know risk aversion is one of the keys that drives the EURUSD, so whenever you get risk aversion, the euro starts to rally and equity markets fall, and vice versa. So that, that, that relationship is important too. Also keep an eye on the USD JPY or the Yen, that's going to be interesting. I think that's a good summation now of the, uh, of the actual market itself. Like I said, be sure to visit CFDs.com for your trading needs. Uh, alternatively, visit the uh, trade signal uh, and, or should I say, download, download the trade signal app. And uh, again, take advantage of that potential 25% bonus. Okay, goodbye now.